Welcome to the bite-sized and memorable look at the world around us. I'm Jim from Nature's Work. This window on nature is looking at trees in winter. I'm often asked how to identify deciduous trees in their bare winter form. In this presentation, I will show you the main characteristics of six common broadleaf trees found in the UK. We will identify features from the overall tree shape and form to its bark, twigs and bugs essentially looking at what makes each tree so distinctive. The trees we'll look at are ash, English oak, beech, common lime, hazel and sycamore. Let's get started with looking and having a closer look at features of a twig. The twig is the outermost part of a branch and contains the terminal bud, this is the undeveloped tip of the young shoot and buds are complete with the protective covers called scales. The scales can vary in colour, shape, size and number and are often a useful way of identifying a tree. Buds on the side of a twig are known as lateral buds and are either alternately located along the twig, as in this case on this witch elm, or they occur opposite as in the case with the green buds of the sycamore. Leaves appear from an area called the node and the section between these nodes is called the internode. And once the leaf of a deciduous tree has emerged from its bud, developed and grown through the summer months, it falls off in the autumn, leaving a remnant scar. Let's take a look at our first tree, which is the ash tree. Fraxinus excelsior in its scientific name. It's a common uh, tree found throughout Britain growing naturally in woods or planted in towns, parks and churchyards. And it's also one of the largest hedgerow trees found in Britain. In winter, once the leaves have fallen off, the bare shape and outline of the tree can be seen. And the shape is determined by the way the tree grows and it branches. And there are two basic forms. One form, which is demonstrated here, is where the main growth is in the same direction every year with branching on either side. One characteristic of the ash is the upward turning branches of these opposite shoots. So you can see the, the upturning uh, tips there, and then the branches are opposite, as you can see there. So the shoots are opposite there. In ash trees, the bark can become ridged, and here the, the and ridging occurs when the new cork layer, the outer uh, coat of the tree, the cork layer is thicker and pushes the old dead cork outwards, and it splits, uh, creates either ridges or plates, and in this case it's created these furrows and ridges. The buds on the ash tree are very, very distinctive. Uh, they're black, uh, it makes it very easy tree to identify in the winter and the lateral buds are as you can see there they're opposite in pairs and one useful way of remembering the ash tree is that it's the black soot left after a fire so that's the, the, the color of the bud. English oak or Quercus roba uh, there are two native oak trees in Britain the English oak and sessile oak and the English oak is the dominant tree in most of Britain particularly on the richer soils and valley bottoms. And it's been planted everywhere in parks and gardens and woods. It's also known as peduncular oak and the acorns have a stalk and botanists know this stalk as a peduncle, hence an old name for it. As you can see there, the outline shape of the English oak um, is quite a dominant, strong looking tree, um, but it has a second form of the outline and the branches are formed giving it a kind of zigzag and twiggy appearance. Um, and the oak forms many, many shoots at the end of the branches. The bark is deeply fissured and ridged, as you can see in this image here. And then the buds have overlapping scales and a lovely rich chestnut color. And they're also clustered so clustering, um, this is when the lateral buds develop as short shoots and 
then they grow the leaves or the flowers at the same point every year. So that's clustering. And just remember chestnut brown buds with terminal cluster. Have a look at the beech tree, Fagus sylvatica. It's the dominant tree of woodlands in the south and central England. It grows strongly on well-drained chalk soils, but it doesn't like wet ground at all. The bark is very smooth and gray, and it's an ideal surface for carving. And people have carved into this since Roman times. It was an old graffiti um, from thousands of years ago. Uh, trees with smooth bark um, is different from the ridged and furrowed where the, uh, bark, where um, here the new cork is produced as a thin layer and the old layer is lost and forms like a dust. So sometimes you get a powdery effect on the, on the surface. So uh, it's an alternate bark from the deeply fissured ash and, and oak that we saw a little bit earlier. The buds are long and thin and each bud has many overlapping scales, it's kind of pointy. They're quite edible when they're, um, before the leaves form, they're, they're quite tasty to eat. The lateral buds you can see stick out from the shoot. And in some years, the, there is a huge crop of oil rich beech nuts. You can see there some empty beech nuts. Um, and the years where you get a huge amount of of, of beech nuts is called a mast year, which is an old word. Mast is an old word for fruit of the forest. And historically, it was an important food for pigs and the tradition of panage, which is the right for um, pigs and other animals to feed in woodlands. So remember the long and pointy brown buds. Common line, Tilia ex europea. The word lime, which is used for trees in Britain, is believed to have come from an old English word, lind, and in Europe it's still known as the linden tree. So common lime is a natural hybrid of the large and small lead lines, which grow across Europe. And whenever the two are present together, you often get this hybrid. And the tree's been planted everywhere, from streets, parks, and gardens, again in Britain. Um, but because it hybrid, because it is a hybrid, it grows very rapidly and it can be a, a very grand British tree at over 40 metres in height. You get this um, tendency to sprout new shoots, uh, either from the base or, or uh, up the stem. And this is more pronounced in the, this hybrid common line than it is in either of the two native forms. And the bark is a pale grey brown with irregular ridges. And you can see there the shoots forming from uh, anywhere along its trunk. Common lime twigs become red. Here they're, 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 they're green, but they do become red in the sun. Uh, and you get this distinctive reddish bud with two scales, a large and a small one. So they can be green and they can tend to this ready pink color. The stems as well can be, can, be very, uh, can be very red and pink. You can see here some trees, you'll see the, the fruit hanging on over winter. So that's an, another indicator of a common line. So red buds on zigzag stems. Hazel. Corylus avalana is a small tree or shrub found in woodlands and hedgerows. It is native to Britain and grows throughout Europe as far as Western Turkey. In woodlands such as this one, it's usually multi-stemmed, having been cut repeatedly or, or a, a practice called coppicing, uh, which is, um, provides wood and resources for building and fencing. The bark is shiny and it has horizontal lines of breathing pores. So you can, you can see, make those out in that image there. And these breathing pores are known as lenticels. 
So the buds are green and flattened on one side and the stem you can make out there slightly hairy. Other features in the winter you'll see are the, the male catkins, the male flowers, which develop through January into, into February. And they hang down, releasing pollen into the wind. And there may be over 200 male flowers on each single catkin. And one of my favorite parts of the hazel tree is if you get a very, very close look, you will see these female flowers, which are tiny red, beautiful little um, uh, flowers at the, uh, in the flower bud, at just at the tip of the bud um, on the branch and they form above the catkin. And you can see the, the red stigmas, which will collect the windblown pollen from the male flower. So remember, rounded green buds on hairy twigs. So the final tree that we'll look at is sycamore, Aedo pseudoplanatus. It's native to central and southern Europe, possibly introduced to Britain in the 16th century, but may have been present hundreds of years before that. It now grows naturally and seeds freely across the country. The bark of older trees is cracked into plates and it may appear as this one does to, to flake off. The buds are distinctive green with overlapping scales on smooth, straight twigs. And the lateral buds, as you can see there, are, are paired and opposite pairs. On some trees, you may find the fruits hanging down in long drooping clusters. Please press like if you've enjoyed this presentation or write any comments you feel uh, relevant. Um, see you next time for more Windows on Nature.